What's your name? Uh, my name is David Smoothley. And where do you work at? Uh, over here at Lao Thai Restaurant here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Cool. And can you tell us a story about this restaurant? Uh, basically, we're a family-run, family-owned uh, type restaurant, and uh, we've been here since uh, 96. So we're going on 20 years to 21 years, actually, yeah. Cool. Uh, and how did, they, how did they get started? Um, how did the restaurant get started? Well, pretty much um, the owner is Sai Kum. That's my father-in-law, which is Annie's de uh, father. He is still back there, actually the main chef right now. And uh, pretty much she actually started uh, cooking, or, or he actually started as a dishwasher at Sawat D. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but that's like one of like probably the first Thai restaurant here in the Twin City. And then he worked his way up to being a chef there. And uh, I think he ended up working there about seven years. And then that's when he decided to open his own restaurant. And this one, Lao Thai, uh, became open here in 96. Cool. And um, what about your backstory? How did you get involved? How did you meet Annie, whose father is the, uh, <laughs> Owner and chef, yeah. Uh, well, basically, uh, me and Andy, we manage the front and also, you know, help out in the kitchen, whatever they need help at. And uh, so, basically, um, we're in the, like, you know, the little Mekong Frogtown area. So, if you guys are familiar with it, we had the light rail construction going on here about, about four or five years ago. And uh, basically, a lot of business here, like, suffered a lot because of uh, all the construction going on. And then, um, pretty much, we're about to close our door down. But luckily, uh, we own the building, so we, we, we could have survived the, the two years of the construction. And then um, that's when me and Annie played a part where uh, her her dad, like I said, is planning on closing down. And then um, she asked us to uh, if we want to take over and, and pretty much see what happens with the, with the new light rail and all that good stuff. So so about four and a half years ago, me and Annie ended up taking over the management up front, and we uh, did some remodeling. Uh, we uh, updated the menus and uh, just pretty much just put everything up to date to modernize a little bit I guess you can say but at the same time we wanted to keep it uh, like the family kind of feel type restaurant so uh, but ever since then yeah we've, we've been do, doing pretty well so cool. yeah so after the light rail did you see a, a spike in uh, um, customers um, you know, we'll, 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 people just come back right 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 that, that, that's, that's a good question we get asked a lot um, I think for us luckily since we've been around for such a long time we have a lot of uh, loyal customers that become over 15 years but uh, new customer wise yeah we started seeing a few more um, which that's good but light rail wise effect wise um, you know I think maybe a 5% different maybe at most but when there is like a special events like in this area or like downtown St. Paul we do see a lot more people but like on a, on a daily basis um, not too much but yeah Talk about what has been some of the most, the best successes you've had. You already touched on the biggest struggle with the light rail. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, what's the biggest success you've had? Uh, I man, I think the best success is just uh, getting more involved with the community, to be honest. Because, you know, we've been here for such a long time. And then, um, you know, first generation, like Annie's father, you know, they're the type of, you know, they're just keep to themselves and just do business, right? And then when me and Annie stepped in, we kind of got to do broad or a, a horizon to aspect of different type of people and then also just getting out the community really and then just doing work with like different organizations like you know ADA, uh, Neighborhood Development and like uh, just so much of other people um, opening a restaurant up to like you know church groups you know um, to you know all kind of stuff man we did like happy hour open mic like just all kind of stuff so I think that's the positivity that we have and we want to do a lot more stuff in the future yeah, yeah. what inspired you all to do that kind of stuff to get more involved with the community um, I, I think like uh, you know um, well I guess because you know we're part of the neighborhood you know so the best thing is to get to know the neighborhood that you're in you know and then since me and Annie were second generation we kind of understand the aspect a little bit better than her dad does mm -hmm. so um, and not only just getting to know people it's, it's just fun in general you know just, just uh, you know expand your networking you know and then at the same time we want to help the community out on what we can't help you know because the community is always here to support us too so can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Ada? Ada, uh, yeah. So I think Ada came about probably about two and a half, three years ago mm -hmm. or so. And then um, they approached us to do you know, some special events here and there. And then also they host like the night market. And then um, also um, they're pretty much here to help you know this area with like, because this area is mainly like Asian restaurants. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, so basically we team up to do a lot of events and projects with them. And uh, I think they've been very helpful. Uh, I, I uh, you know, hope that um, more surrounding business uses them mm -hmm. as a resource because uh, I think, you know, if anything, you know, like I said, 
they're very helpful. And then, because there's a lot of stuff the first generation, they don't understand things. But I think Ada simplifies it and breaks it down where people, it's more friendly, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. Friendly users, yeah. So. And you talked a little bit about uh, kind of updating the menu, updating the restaurant. Um, was, uh, was Annie's dad, what's his name again? Uh, Psycom. Psycom. Uh -huh. uh, was, how, was, how receptive was he to that? And, um, <laughs> Um, yeah, well, you know, you know, like I say, it's first generation, so they're a little more old school, so they're more uh, uh, hesitant, I guess you can say. But uh, you know, me and Annie, we we uh, compromise and, and, and fought, you know, to do to the best to our ability, you know. And then as he's seen, as I said, uh, with 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 the community response and the customer response, he sees that you know that we're moving forward. And then, um, you know, the business is doing, you know, like I said, pretty well. Uh, he's more lenient now, but, you know, in the beginning, yeah, it was, it was kind of tough. But I think once he gets, you know, the, the aspect of what we're, what we're trying to do, um, you know, slowly but surely, he understands, you know. What other, what, uh, what's another story you can share with me about the restaurant? What's maybe a uh, significant thing that's happened in here? Um, story of impact that how it's changed the community or changed your life? Um, man, I think like for me, my background wasn't entrepreneurship. So like coming here like four and a half years ago, doing this with Andy, uh, um, you know, I learned you know a lot. You know, like like hard work. You know what I mean? But um, but hard work is always rewarding because in the end it pays off. You know, especially like for me, uh, it's not about like you know uh, profit or whatever. I think it's more uh helping the community out and just people surrounding you. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you can help them out, then, you know, it's a win-win situation for all of us, you know. So um, I think for us, for my impact here at Lao Thai, I think, man, just, just hopefully get involved more of the, you know, community and also with younger people here around this area, right. And then also, man, honestly, keep keep this, um, I mean, I want to say, like, because I feel like this street here is it's the most authentic street you would get in Twin City. But it's just kind of keep that alive because most of the restaurant is still for its first generation. And hopefully we can get some second generation people in there and just keep it alive, man. Totally. Yeah. Um, and can you tell us about what food you all are preparing for the dinner tonight? Uh, yeah. So basically, um, I think uh, Aki, one that approached, approached us, whatever, and she tells us about uh, Frogtown uh, Farm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so basically, we're using some of their veggies tonight, like some, uh, I think, cabbage, tomatoes, some arugula, some green mustards, and uh, a couple of other items that we're using. So basically, uh, we're going to do a uh, house salad with an uh, egg vinaigrette uh, dressing, and that's what more like a Laotian touch. Mm -hmm. So basically, t tonight, we're going to do like a little more of an uh, authentic Laotian type dinner, you know? So basically, it's not really stuff like on our menu here at the restaurant. So it's going to be pretty neat, and then hopefully, you know, you guys enjoy it with the experiment. And then also, we're going to have, like, some steamed cabbage that we got from the farm. And then we're going to do this um, port billy, like, braised type stew. And then we're going to have some white rice, sticky rice, and then we're going to have, uh, what else we're going to have here? Oh, yeah, we're going to have some um, a noodle dish, a stir-fried noodle dish, right? So basically, it's uh, a like, ocean version of a pad thai. But it's, not, but it's not saucy, though. Yeah, and then uh, also we have a little side dish uh, of a tomato sauce that we're using from the farm, too. And that's uh, we use dip or meat in or, like, you smash in your rice. And then we're also going to have some uh, Lao sausages, too. Cool. Um, and you have mentioned the Frogtown Park and Farm a little bit. Uh, beyond tonight's uh, activities, have you all had much connection with them? Uh, no. You know, to be honest, we, we never knew they existed until Aki uh, – came and approached us with it. So um, we got to meet meet with them yesterday when we picked the vegetables, so it was real neat. And, and it's a pretty big farm out there. Yeah. So uh, we look forward to, uh, you know, work with them some more in the future. Cool. Uh, anything else you might like to add? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, just come out and support your community, man. And, and, and you know, I think, like, Frogtown and uh, Louis Mekong area, we have something special. And, uh, you know, definitely want to keep it alive. Cool. You say you have something special in it this area what what more can you tell me about the uh, the neighborhood here okay um from you know from my from my experience i understand that uh, uh the, the areas be a little bit rough you know and uh so basically you know slowly but surely you know i think you know it's cleaning up and um basically um from what i've seen you know we're getting a little bit more young young americans here so um hopefully you know uh at the same time we, we, we want to keep it real too where where I don't want this neighborhood to lose this authenticity too, you know what I mean? So um, hopefully we can all work together 
and then make it a better place and, and still have the same people that do live here. Cool. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thanks.